Hello and welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to show how to use the F distribution to solve problems and we're going to do it in Excel. So let's take a look at our Excel spreadsheet. The F distribution is used to determine whether two groups have different variances, basically whether the two groups are independent or not. It's normally used to develop confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. It's rarely used to model applications. In other words, you, you rarely see the F distribution graphed. And the F distribution has four different parameters that go into all the calculations. First parameter is the chi-squared statistic for group one. Greek letter chi looks like a large X, and that's calculated. You can do that by, your, by hand or by Excel. It's a lot easier in Excel. And the second statistic is the chi-squared statistic for group two. third one is the degrees of freedom for data group one. And the fourth one is the degrees of freedom for data group two. And every, S di every F distribution problem involves calculating the F statistic for those two data groups. And here's the formula for that. It's the quantity of the chi-square statistic for data group one over the degrees of freedom for data group one over quantity of the chi-square statistic for data group two over degrees of freedom for data group two. Excel does all this, but you can do it by hand, and that's how you do it by hand. The F distribution is actually a family of distributions. Each different F distribution has a unique combination of degrees of freedom for the two different data groups. And the most important use of the F distribution related to the developing of confidence intervals and hypothesis tests is the calculation of the p-value. And below we see the Excel formula. There are three different parameters, the F statistic that was just calculated, and the two degrees of freedom. If you had to do it manually, that's what you would do. You'd plug in that in the Excel formula right there. And the, the p-value is used to determine whether two groups of data have different variances. And the steps to using the p-value to determining this are as follows. If you had to do all of this manually, this would be the three steps that you'd use. Excel does it all at one time. We'll show you how to do that. First step, calculate the F statistic for the two data groups using the formula that we've shown above that has the four different parameters. Second step, calculate the p-value for that F statistic and the two different degrees of freedom. And that's the formula right there. And the third step, if you were doing it manually, Compare the p-value with the required alpha. If the p-value is less than the required alpha, then the two data groups are assumed to be independent. Alpha is derived from the degree of certainty that's required. If you require a 95% degree of certainty, alpha will equal 0.05. Alpha equals 1 minus degree of certainty. Now let's take a look at a problem that uses the F distribution that we're going to solve in Excel. And the problem reads as follows. Three sales closing methods were used. Three groups of four salespeople each were randomly chosen. They're assumed to be of equal abilities. Each group was instructed to use only one of the closing methods on all of their sales. Sales totals for each of the 12 salespeople were collected over the next two weeks determine within 95% certainty whether there is a difference in effectiveness of the closing methods. Below are the sales results of the 12 salespeople. And it's assumed that there, are, there is nothing else different. It's assumed that the salespeople are of equal ability. And there are the three groups, each of four salespeople. Each group must use one of the, the closing methods exclusively. And here are the results after two weeks of each of the 12 salespeople. Let's do that in Excel. You could do this problem by hand. Very, very tedious. You'd much rather use Excel, as we'll do right here. Hit Tools, Data Analysis. You may not see Data Analysis in the Tools menu. If you don't, you have to install the Tool Pack. So Tools, Add-ins, and make sure the checkbox is checked next to Analysis Tool Pack. This is Excel 2003, by the way. Okay. So we hit Tools, Data Analysis. And the type of data analysis, ANOVA single factor. ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, single factor. And let's take a look at this dialog box. First piece of dialog is the input range. So delete what's in there. Hit the square in the corner there. And 
select everything that's in yellow on our spreadsheet. Hit the square in the corner of that dialog box. Okay, next, date is in columns, that's already selected. And the labels are in the first row, that's checked. Label is methods 1, 2, and 3. Alpha is 0.5, and that's derived from the level of certainty that, that require. It says determine within 95% certainty, so alpha equals 0.05. And the next and final piece of data that we have to put in is the output range. That is basically the cell on the spreadsheet that will be the upper left-hand corner of the output. So we're going to select that little cell in yellow right there, and that will be the upper left-hand corner of our output. Hit the square in the corner of the dialog box, hit OK, and we're going to get our output. There it is. That easy. So let's take a look at that output and see how we've solved the problem. Let's interpret that output. Okay, that's the output that Excel has provided for us. Let's color that in light brown and put a border around it so we know that that is the output that Excel created for us. And we'd also like to make that output a little bit more readable. We're going to center the data in some of the cells. Okay, in these nine cells, we're going to center the data so that that output's a little bit more legible. There it is. We can read it easier. Okay. Let's go through the data. Now, remember, alpha was set at 0.5. That's because our degree of certainty was 95% that we required. So alpha equals 0.5. And the output that Excel provides calculates the p-value right there. We don't have to do any manual calculation. There it is right there. But if we did want to calculate the p-value, let's see how it's done. We can see how the different pieces of data on the output go into that calculation. And as we mentioned, there are four different parameters. The chi-squared statistic for group one. On the output, it's called sum of the squares between groups. That's 72 and the chi-square statistic for group two. On the output, it's called sum of the squares within groups, and that's 46. Our next two parameters are the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for group one on the output is called degrees of freedom within groups, and the formula for that is the number of columns minus one. Remember, the data was uh, three columns, four rows of data three columns with the three closing methods and there were four different salespeople. It's so three by four. So degrees of freedom for group one equals two and degrees of freedom for group two on the output that's called degrees of freedom within groups. The formula equals number of columns times the quantity of number of rows minus one and we can see that equals nine and that's shown on the output. And calculation of the p-value and f-statistic. P-value, we've already taken a look at that. And there's the f-statistic, putting those four parameters, the chi-square statistics and the degrees of freedom together on the output gives us that f-statistic. And we could take that f-statistic and put it into an Excel formula and calculate the p-value. The output's already done that, but if we had to do that, we could plug that into our Excel formula that we've been given to calculate the p-value. And we can see that it's a lot easier doing it this way than calculating it by hand. The hand calculations are very, very, very tedious, and this is a very basic ANOVA problem. And there's the p-value. P-value is ultimately what we were looking for in this problem. There's a rule using the p-value. We're trying to determine whether the groups are different. If the p-value is less than alpha, the groups are different. If the p-value is greater than alpha, the groups are not assumed to be different. Now p-value is 0.01 something. Alpha is 0.05. So p-value is less than alpha. Groups are different. If you would like to master MBA level statistics in Excel, check out our Excel Statistical Master Series of eManuals at www.excelmasterseries.com slash eManual.php. Thank you very much and goodbye.